Hello everyone, welcome to the first installment of All My Grammar, the grammar series that is definitely different. This grammar series is designed to help you understand some grammatical terminology in a fun way that will help you remember these terms. So the first thing we're going to understand is that All My Grammar is based in a town called Sentence Ford. And in Sentence Ford, there are a lot of words who live there, all doing their jobs to build sentences. The first character we'll meet is Nancy Noun, the star of Episode 1 of All My Grammar. Nancy Noun is known as the hardest working person in the town of Sentence Ford. She has six jobs, so you can imagine how hard she works. She is in every sentence. Now remember, Nancy, the noun, is a person, place, thing, or idea. We learned that probably in the first or second grade. A noun names a person, place, thing, or idea. That's like saying you are a girl or you are a boy. That's part of your identity. That's who you are. But what we're interested in here is what Nancy does for a living. Yes, she's a person, place, thing, or idea, but as a word that names those things, she has different jobs to do in the sentence. So that's what we're going to look at here. Nancy's first job is the subject of a sentence. And here you see some examples. Very simple. And I think most of us can find the subject of a sentence. Nancy is our friend. Notice I've put that in red to help you see the subject a little easier. And then I've added a sentence here that does not include the word Nancy because I don't want you to be confused. Uh, the subject is not always the word Nancy, obviously. But here we see the road to sentence forward is long. What is long? The road is long. The road is the subject. Road, of course, is a thing. That's what it names. But within the sentence, it's functioning as the subject. Nancy's second job is as a predicate nominative. Now, we have to jump ahead a little bit and understand that verbs can be either action verbs or verbs that state being, linking verbs, they're called. Words like is, are, was. And the word that is on the other side of this linking verb is the word that's on the other side is either going to be a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective. If it's a noun, it's a predicate nominative. So if it names a person, place, thing, or idea, it is a predicate nominative. And all that means is that Nancy means the same as one. It means the same thing. One is Nancy. Same thing in the second sentence. We are. Are gives us a state of being. We, the subject, are, the linking verb, winners is what we are. So winners means the same thing. It is linked. It's like this is an equal sign, these linking verbs. We'll have more about linking verbs when we get to Vernon verb a little later in our episodes. But that's a predicate nominative, the noun that is on the other side of a linking verb. Here's Nancy's third job, a direct object. A direct object receives the object, receives the action of a verb. For instance, we love Nancy. We, the subject, love is the verb. What do we love? Nancy. Nancy is what receives the love. She is the direct object. And here we have something a little bit uh, topical here. Michael Phelps took, what did he take? He took the gold. Eight times. 
So gold is a noun. It is what was taken. So it is the direct object. Notice that all these words in red are nouns. They're all Nancy noun. Nancy's fourth job, the object of the preposition, and we'll learn more about prepositions later. For now, you need to know that they're words like to, from, about. They show relationship between one thing and another. So if a noun comes after a preposition, we call it the object of the preposition. I gave the flowers to who did you give it to? Nancy. Mrs. Phelps got flowers from Michael. I ran to the store. So all of these words in red come right after a preposition. So we call them the object of the preposition. Later on, as I said, we'll find a list of prepositions if you don't already have those memorized. A lot of people memorize those in middle school, but if you haven't, that's something you might want to go ahead and do. Make life a little easier. Nancy's fifth job, the indirect object. Now this really takes the place of the prepositional phrase many times. Just instead of saying, I gave the flower to Nancy, the English language allows us to use word position to create the same meaning. So here, if I say, I gave Nancy the flower, you would all know what that meant. You use indirect objects all the time, even if you don't know exactly how to name them. You know that I'm not giving Nancy. I'm giving the flower to Nancy. And you know that because you know indirect objects. Same thing in the second sentence. He threw Homer. Well, he didn't throw Homer. He threw the ball to Homer. So Homer and Nancy receive not directly the action, but the benefit of the action that's done to the direct object. The direct objects here would be flower and ball. Nancy's sixth job is as an appositive. That's simply a restatement of another word. It's, it's really uh, explaining a bit more about what a noun, a previous noun means, the word with which it is in apposition if we want to get fancy about it. Here, my friend works hard. That sentence makes perfect sense, but I want to specify which friend. So I put in Nancy. Appositives are almost always set off with commas. That's it for our first episode of All My Grammar. Take a look at this more than once if that will help you learn the six functions of a noun.